Hello, everyone. My name is John Haeckel, and welcome back to the Rebuild SoCal Zone. Today, I'm joined by Marcy Stanich, who will be my amazing co-host. Marcy is the Director of Water and Environmental Relations for Rebuild SoCal Partnership. Hi, John. Hey, on today's episode, we are joined by the Metropolitan Water District's Chairwoman, Gloria Gray. Chairwoman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, John. I'm happy to be here, and thank you for that introduction, and Happy New Year to everyone. Chairwoman, thank you so much. Why don't we jump right into our first question? Your past achievements, commendations, community, and public service involvement is something that I find not only impressive, but also awe-inspiring. Can you explain to us how you came to be so passionate in what was once viewed as a man's world? And also, what motivates you to continue pushing yourself to keep achieving these amazing milestones? Good morning. Let me first thank you and Rebuild SoCal Partnership for this opportunity. You are doing so much to ensure Southern California has the infrastructure we need to thrive in the next century. We really share a similar mission. In Metropolitan, we are working hard to maintain, build, and invest in order to bring safe, clean, and reliable water to the region. Metropolitan is the nation's largest supplier of treated drinking water. Our service area includes 19 million people. That's one in every two Californians and one of every 17 Americans. We import and distribute roughly half of the water used in Southern California. The region and its $1.6 trillion economy relies on us to consistently deliver safe and cost-effective water. That is a huge responsibility, and it is a big challenge particularly as the climate changes and our population grows. Despite our key role in the region, many Californians don't know about Metropolitan. I understand that. I didn't know a lot about the agency or water management for much of my career. My education and experience in water issues came later in life. Let me tell you a little about how I got here. My professional career spanned more than 30 years with the LA County Department of Health Services. I started as a secretary and steadily worked my way up the ladder to healthcare administrator. Along the way, I was a community liaison and I've always understood the importance of giving back to my community. But in that particular position, I truly understood the need. I work to make our communities aware of the resources available to them and informed about significant issues. So it was natural for me to look for other ways to continue giving back to my community and my neighbors. One way I did this was by serving on various nonprofit and public boards and commissions. Then in 2006, I was encouraged to run for a seat on the West Basin Municipal Water District Board. I won that election to represent the city of Inglewood along with other cities and communities. And in 2009, my colleagues on that board appointed me to represent them on the board of the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. And now here I am, not only serving on the boards of both agencies, but leading as president of West Basin, and in my second term as chairwoman of the Metropolitan Water District. I am immensely proud to bring a different voice, a different background to our board's leadership. For too long, the water industry was dominated by men. Thankfully, we're seeking folks from historically underrepresented groups, such as women and people of color, and a new generation bringing both their technical ex expertise and elevated leadership styles to the sector. That trend must continue to be a priority and a focus for all of us. We know that there is much work to be done to develop equity 
and inclusion in all sectors. I am thrilled that I can use my position to bring the region's diverse communities to the table as we map out our water future. Communities that might not have always felt welcome have been invited, absolutely need to be part of that discussion. Our challenges in the water industry are complicated and diverse. By opening the doors to talented policymakers of all races and genders, we are seeing new and innovative solutions. I'm also thrilled I can serve as a role model and mentor. I tell young people all the time, if I can get here with my background and my path, you can also. Make no mistake. It takes determination and hard work, but the opportunities are there. Water is a great policy issue, a great career path, and provides a great opportunity to work on something that's vital to everything and every person on this planet. Chairwoman, thank you so much for that very impressive introduction. That was amazing. So you've just completed your second year as chairwoman of the Metropolitan Water District. In October of 2020, you were unanimously reelected, and January 1st, you began your second two-year term. That is an amazing achievement. Can you share some of your successes and challenges that you were faced with in your first term? And also, what is one highlight that stands out the most to you? Sure. Just to mention a few things. First, our regional recycled water program. In 2019, we saw the grand opening of a demonstration facility for the project. This laid the groundwork for a future full-scale water recycling plant in Southern California that would be among the largest in the nation. And in 2020, the board voted to fund environmental planning of the full-scale project, moving it another step closer to reality. The project would allow us to reduce our reliance on imported supplies and replenish groundwater basin. And second, in regards to the Colorado River, the Colorado River provides roughly one-third of all supplies for Southern California. But with a long-term drought in the watershed of the river, and other challenges, California and its partners in the Colorado River Basin have to adapt so that the river can continue to provide essential economic, social, and environmental benefits to the region. Metropolitan played a pivotal role in the development of a landmark agreement called the Colorado River Drought Contingency Plan, which has helped keep Lake Mead from falling to critically low water levels. In 2019, Metropolitan immediately put the conservation and water management tools created in the plan to use, adding a record amount of water into storage in Lake Mead. With Metropolitan's help, California has diverted the lowest amount of water from the Colorado River in 70 years. And on the Delta Conveyance Project, Metropolitan's board committed last month to funding its share of the environmental review process for the Delta Conveyance Project. The project would modernize the state water project and protect California's largest water supply by guarding against sea level rise, climate change, and seismic threats. I'd also like to highlight a few things. The first was partially inspired by some of the things I mentioned earlier and partially inspired by the powerful Black Lives Matter movement. Metropolitan has recommitted to practices and values that promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're taking action to improve our workplace culture, and ensure acceptance and success for all genders, races, ethnicities, ages, sexual identities and orientations, and abilities. 
And our response to COVID-19 has been impressive. While many employees are working remotely, a large number of our essential workers need to remain at our facilities and plants to do their work. That has required us to quickly adopt new safety procedures and adapt using small micro teams of people who are rotated in and out of work together to minimize exposure. Finally, I am proud of our board for its ability to work together on the many challenges facing us. Our agencies are diverse, and sometimes we have competing needs and interests. But the value of Metropolitan is in our ability to collaborate for the good of the region. Metropolitan was born nearly a century ago out of the realization that Southern Californians had to unite to solve the water problems. That ethic has continued through the decades. Pooling resources and using economies of scale, Metropolitan and its member agencies have built pipelines and reservoirs and cutting edge water treatment plants. Only by working together for the good of all Southern California and we ensure all our communities have the reliable water supply they need and deserve. Chairwoman, thank you so much for sharing that with our listeners. Also, can I just say one more time, congratulations from all of us on your reelection. Thank you so much. You're welcome. With MWD's general manager, Jeff Keitlinger, retiring, we know that you will play a major role in attaining a suitable replacement. Can you share with our listeners the importance of finding the right man or woman for this position? And where would you also like to see this individual take the future of MWD? Thank you for the question. First, I want to acknowledge our general manager, Jeff Heidlinger, for his decades of service to Metropolitan. He has been a truly extraordinary general manager. And Southern California is in a better place because of his leadership. He has been awesome. Our board is now tasked with finding his replacement. We are looking to choose a leader who will build on Metropolitan's tradition of innovation, partnership, and commitment to millions of people in our service area. We need a leader with the ability to bring together the varied interest mentioned earlier, someone who can remind us that together we serve the good of the whole. Our organization also needs someone with the technical expertise, lead us through the short and long-term responsibilities and challenges ahead. In the coming year, we'll be finalizing a new integrated water resources plan. This plan strives to provide reliable and affordable water to Southern California for the next 25 years. It is a critical framework that will help guide our decision making. We also have additional advancements to make on all the projects mentioned, the regional recycle water program, Colorado River sustainability, and the Delta Conveyance project. Mr. Keilinger helped put us on the path for the success of these endeavors. We need a leader who has the tools and expertise to see them through to the next phase. Finally, we need a leader with vision. The trials ahead are substantial. Climate change, our agency's fiscal integrity, ensuring safe and affordable water, addressing environmental and water quality threats, and nurturing an inclusive culture. Managing through each of these will require tremendous insight and initiative. Thankfully, Metropolitan has a deep foundation of integrity, foresight, and innovation. We need a leader who will build on that. Thank you for that. Chairwoman, I know uh, speaking for Rebuild SoCal Partnership, 
We will definitely miss having Jeff around, but we know that you and the rest of your board are going to choose a suitable replacement and continue to maintain the high goals of your mission statement. Good luck, and we look forward to seeing who the next leader is going to be. Well, thank you for that. And Jeff Keinlinger has been an awesome leader as general manager, so I will miss him. He certainly has. Lastly, as you are aware, uh, Rebuild SoCal Partnership is a very unique organization backed by strong union and labor support. We work very hard at keeping ourselves immersed in the wide array of agencies, water districts, cities, and counties that put construction projects on the streets. Can you tell us what the next few years might look like in Metropolitan's budget for construction projects? And is there any specific or unique projects on MWD's horizon? Well, first, let me once again thank the Rebuild SoCal Partnership for the tremendous job you're doing to help educate the public and decision makers about how important it is to fund infrastructure of all kinds. And as a retired member of SEIU Local 721, I appreciate the hard work and dedication of the tens of thousands of union workers you represent who are working day in and day out on these projects throughout our region. Throughout my career, I've had the support of unions and I value the essential role in protecting workers and strengthening the lines of communication between management and employees. In terms of our projects, Metropolitan maintains an ongoing commitment to construct and rehabilitate facilities that enable long-term reliable water deliveries. Infrastructure reliability is a primary focus of our capital investment plan, a $2 billion investment over the next 10 years. It has a strong increasing emphasis on refurbishment and replacement of Metropolitan's existing infrastructure. Other programs focus on water quality excellence, system reliability, regulatory compliance, and enhancements to business processes that improve our efficiency and provide cost saving. I've already mentioned a few of the big projects on the horizon the Regional Recycled Water Program, the Delta Conveyance Project. But we're still in the planning stages of the Recycled Water Project in Carson. Our board will ultimately decide whether to actually make the $3.4 billion investment in building the full-scale project in 2024. So construction is a few years off. The same can be said of the Delta Conveyance Project. The state is a leader on that project, and final decision-making is at least a few years away. A new generation of local supply projects are in the planning stages that will create and support more jobs, too. One thing on the more immediate horizon, Metropolitan is preparing to build four new battery energy storage systems at three of our water treatment plants in Granada Hills, Laverne, and Riverside's Temecula Valley, as well as a pump station in Lake Forest. The projects will allow Metropolitan to store excess solar power we produce. Metropolitan has long been a leader in the water industry, not just for the size and scale of its project, but for its innovative solutions. Today, that drive to innovate is stronger than ever. As we move forward with these and other projects, I am confident you will see our ongoing commitment to excellence and continue as we work to meet tomorrow's water challenges. Thank you for that. I mean, we certainly look forward to the rolling out of all of those projects. And Chairwoman, as you stated earlier, Rebuild SoCal Partnership, which consists of 2,750 contractors and 90,000 union workers, we just want you to know that we are going to continue to work with you and your agency 
so that we can rebuild our Southern California water infrastructure. Well, Marcy, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to express my thoughts today. And I look forward to working with your organization and thank you for the work that you do. Uh, well, thank you. And we just want you to know that it's been very informative and we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and sharing your insight on the future of MWD. Thank you again. Take care. John, thank you for having me as your co-host today. It was a pleasure having you, Marcy. Hey, wasn't Chairwoman Gray a remarkable guest? She certainly was, John. And as you know, in December, Rebuild SoCal Partnership was asked by MWD to give public comment at the Board of Directors Bay Delta Committee meeting. That's where they voted on whether or not to continue funding metropolitan share of the project's planning and pre-construction costs. That was quite an honor to be asked to comment by the titans of the water industry. Marcy, can you share with our listeners how the board voted? Sure. So after hours of public comment by different organizations, some for and some against this additional funding, the board unanimously voted to fund the recommended share of 47.2% for planning and pre-construction costs. And that turns out to be a fiscal impact of $58.9 million. Now, $50 million of that has already been incorporated into Metropolitan's adopted budget and the remaining $34 million is going to be funded by a DWR refund. Now, just because they voted on this additional funding doesn't mean that they are agreeing to approve the single tunnel project. That is something that is anticipated to happen sometime in 2024. But the way I look at it, Marcy, we are definitely headed in the right direction when it comes to securing the future of our water delivery system. It is, John. And to be honest, the status quo in the Delta is really not an option, and time is of the essence. The cost of doing nothing could disrupt our state's primary water supply and definitely cripple our economy. Marcy, the chairwoman mentioned a regional recycled water program. Can you explain this a little further to our listeners? Sure. So in October of 2019, operations began on demonstration plant that sits on the campus of the LA County Sanitation District in Carson, California. This program will purify wastewater, and that is water that has been discharged from your homes, your businesses, and so on. And this is wastewater that's currently being sent to the ocean. After this water goes through the Advanced Purification Center, it's then tested by scientists and engineers just to ensure that the end result is the highest quality of purified water that you can get. So if this program is approved by regulators, then this could very well become one of the largest advanced water treatment plants in the world. That's amazing. So wait a minute. So, so tell me, after the water passes their quality control process, where does this water go? Does it flow back into the ocean? No, that's a, actually a really good question. So what happens is after it's been cleaned and treated, it flows, like I said, into the advanced water treatment plant, where then it's further purified. So the water will then be used to replenish our groundwater basins, and eventually it'll be pumped up, disinfected, and used again. So right now, the advanced purification center is generating all of the information needed for the potential construction of a full-scale recycled water plant that, as the chairwoman had mentioned earlier, could produce up to 150 million gallons a day. And like she also said, that's enough water for more than 500,000 homes. Wow. This type of project um, sounds like makes so much sense to me. And I think it's one that will create a lot of jobs for our industry. It really is, John. A project of this size will cost roughly $3.4 billion to build and another $125 million a year to operate. And I believe once it's approved, it will take roughly 11 years to design and build. And you know, John, I think this program is such an amazing concept and one that's gonna assure significant water reuse in Southern California. And I'm thinking if, you know, if any of our listeners would like to get more information on this program, they should go to Metropolitan Water District's website and they can read up on it a little bit more. 
And that website is mwdh2o.com. This concludes another episode of the Rebuild SoCal Zone. Thank you for listening, and thank you to Marcy Stanage for joining me today, along with Chairman Gray. Finally, join us again next month when we'll have another exciting guest. Make sure you subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all other platforms.